Now let's have a look at our graphs. The graphs, just as much as your calculations, if not more, need to be relevant. It doesn't help that I compare the number of males versus females that are actually filled in my questionnaire. What am I going to do with that data? Remember, our assessment rubric actually says they serve a purpose, right? Um, they are of the correct type. They need to be easy to interpret, headings, labels, and legends, but they need to help to answer questions. They need to contribute to the solution and explain aspects of the problem or a solution. Okay, so what we're going to do with our graphs, so we're actually going to put it in our Word report and we're going to draw findings from it. We're going to say, okay, from this, I can actually see X, Y, Z. I can see that people prefer that. I can see that people were overworked. I can see whatever people use this app or that app. Okay, we only need two graphs technically. Okay, but sometimes it's safer to make three at least so that your teacher can mark the two best ones and so that you can choose whether you want to use three graphs in your report or whether you want to use two graphs and one query or report from your database as your third finding. So over here, what I've done is I use the gender versus mental effect of no contact on workers. Oh, I didn't even include data labels. I completely forgot that, right? So the effect of the age versus the mental effect of no contact with co-workers. You can also call that correlation or whatever. And then here I can see, okay, so a 40 age uh, had quite a big, there were quite a few people who had an um, average impact. Let's actually see if this is not better the other way around. Let me switch these two. Mm, average impact, yeah, I don't know, you can see which one works better. Okay, so this is what I did with this data. I'll show you some specific examples now. This min, median, average, max I didn't use as a um, graph, and the productivity working from home I thought was a good um, option for a pie chart. Okay, never ever use a pie chart and something where people could choose more than one option. A pie chart is only when something forms part of the whole. So where there is an actually predetermined possible maximum number. So where people could choose more than one option, there isn't a possible maximum whole number. So don't ever use that as a pie chart. Right, so here I have a pie chart of how much of an, of an impact it had to people working from home. Now let's look at some examples of how graphs can be improved. These are all examples from past pets from my learners. So if you have longer descriptions, it's better to use a bar chart and always, always, always add data labels. You need to label both axes and you need to put in legends. Right, here's another example. For something as simple as a yes, no, of the people who actually chose a specific one. I think a pie chart is actually better um, and you can use a data caller to make it clear to read. Here, I just wanted to show you that it's very hard to distinguish such a small legend and especially with something that has similar coloring. And it's definitely not ideal to use values as data labels in a pie chart, so literally the number of people who chose each option. So it's much easier to use data callouts so that people can clearly see which option belongs to each portion of the chart. This is a good example of the title of the chart actually not giving us enough information. Gangs recruit children. That kind of sounds like yes, gangs recruit children or no, gangs don't rec recruit children. Actually, the question was, do people know that gangs recruit children? All right, so the title must really give you enough context, especially if you shortened your headings. Please go back and check what the original question was and make your title descriptive enough. To use the value, the number of people who chose a specific option, as well as the percentage, really makes it confusing. So please just use one and preferably the percentage. It also helps a lot to move your legend, this one at the bottom, to move it 
to the side. I prefer putting it on the right hand side. I can't really tell you why. It just reads better for me. But move it to the side and also don't be afraid to increase the font sizes of your different elements. Things like the data labels and the legend to improve readability. Right. Too much information doesn't work on a pie chart. And this was also um, an instance where they where we basically counted the data twice, male yes versus male no, female yes, female no. Right, so um, how many people have been in a natural disaster? Um, this was quite a fantastic layout for me to see how you actually do this. So it works good with data labels, of course, column chart work better, and the structure for the uh, of the data to have this um, graph as the result was actually like this, just having the male and female once and yes, no, and then it puts it as a little mini label here at the bottom. I thought that's really nice. Now, something like this is also an example where we need better context. We actually need the yes and no to make a proper finding. Here they compared male and female, the number of people who are aware of di disabled children or the number, of, like how many disabled children there are or things like that. Um, but they just counted how many actually knew of it. If that doesn't help. You actually need to know how many knows of it compared to how many does not know of it. Okay, so male, no, yes, female, yes, no. Um, and then you can actually have a data structure like this to, to achieve this graph. You'll see for interest sake in this graph, we actually used data labels that actually included um, I think it's called a category name, but you just play around with the different options in the data labels and you'll see you can actually put this as part of the data label as well and not just the values. And then lastly, this graph was quite good to start with. It can't really improve, be improved that much, but this was based on a general knowledge question. So there is actually a correct answer. So instead of indicating the correct answer in the title, you can indicate the correct answer by pulling out one piece of the pie that actually shows it better. And then you can also move the legend to the right hand side or left hand side to um, increase the size of the pie itself. Right, go ahead, make your graphs, and I hope that helped to give you some indication. We also, very importantly, need to move our calculations and move our graphs now. The best way to move the calculations is to actually cut it and go and put it on the analysis sheet. After you've done that, it's very important to resize everything so that it's nice and readable you'll see that it's definitely necessary to do quite a bit of work in terms of formatting to make everything fit properly on your analysis page. It's up to you how you want to structure it. If you want to just put everything at the bottom or if you want to put them from left to right, sometimes from left to right is better so that you can um, adjust the sizes of the columns easier. So completely up to you. Just make sure that it fits in nicely and you're definitely going to use the same colors and not do a different color scheme on this page because we want consistency. The same with the graphs. If you want to apply any styles to your graphs, please make sure that you can't use different styles on the graphs over here now. They all need to be exactly the same. So if you do want to change it to a different style, make sure that it's all a very, very similar style and that it doesn't like look completely different. You can't do that, for example. That won't work. Okay. Now to move the graphs, um, I would not cut and paste the graphs. The graphs, I would use the option to move since this is a lot safer that you don't accidentally change the type from a graph to a picture. So on the design tab, there's an option that says move chart and choose that it must be an object in the graphs worksheet. Now you'll see once you've done that, it sometimes places it somewhere funny, ooh, all the way at the bottom there, and then I need to move it to the top. All right, we're done with our graphs and we've moved everything. So. At the moment, we're finished with our graphs over here as well, and we are just about done with our spreadsheet. The only last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at how to get this mark for doing a relevant calculation that has information other than the respondents' responses from the survey. So if you're not interested in doing this one, then you can skip the next video and just move on to the database videos.